The Gorilla on the Boat, written in red by Shan McFadden. No one ever paid attention to James. Well, not his parents, anyway. So when James looked up from building his sand castle and put his hands over his eyes and stared out into the water and said, Father, I can see a boat out there. Father didn't even look up from his book. Uh, well, it's a beach after all, isn't it? Not that unusual to see a boat, said Father. No, Dad, look, said James excitedly. I, I think there's a... There's a gorilla on that boat. Gorilla, Father grunted from behind his book. Likely story. No, Dad, really, you have to look, shouted James. Now the gorilla on the boat is waving at me. Father grumbled and kept reading. And now the gorilla on the boat is dancing, said James. He's doing a crazy dance now, Dad, you have to see it. But Father just ignored him. And now... Now the gorilla is wriggling his butt at me. He's shaking his bum at me, Dad. James tugged frantically at his father's arm. Father put down his book and scowled out at the water. Then he glared at James and said, There's no gorilla out there. Can't you see I'm too busy for your foolishness, you silly little boy? And sure enough, when James checked, the boat was there, but the gorilla was gone. They packed up and went home shortly after that. But as they headed to the car, James looked back and swore that he could see a wet gorilla hiding behind a beach umbrella. The gorilla was laughing. Father fiddled with the radio all the way home, and he liked to fiddle with the radio when he drove, so he didn't even look in the rearview mirror when James said, Dad, there's a gorilla riding a bicycle right behind our car. Not the gorilla business again, grunted Father as he fiddled with the dials and buttons on the radio. But now the gorilla has his bike up on just one wheel. He's doing a wheelie, Dad, said James. And now he's standing on the handlebars. Come on, you have to look. Father ignored him and just kept clicking buttons. Dad, Dad, the gorilla just jumped on the back of our car. He just climbed up on our roof, yelled James. Father finally found the radio station he wanted. Then he turned to James and glowered and said, There's no gorilla on our car and that's that. I want to enjoy my music in peace, so no more foolishness from you, you silly little boy. James crossed his arms and frowned and didn't say another word. Interestingly enough, during the entire drive home, cars kept beeping and honking at Father, and people on the street pointed excitedly at the roof of the car. There must be a parade coming through or something like that, Father grumbled. Then he rolled down his window and shouted, Will you keep it down? I'm trying to listen to my music in here. Father turned up his music really loud. But even with all of the noise, James could swear he heard the sound of laughing coming from above him. When he got home, James rushed out to the backyard to tell his mother what had happened. But Mother didn't even look up from clipping her rose bushes when James said, Mom, we saw a gorilla today at the beach and he followed us home. Now, James, said Mother without looking up. It isn't nice to lie to your mother. I'm not lying, Mom, James said. Then he pointed at Mother's prized flower bed and said, Mom, he's here. The gorilla is in the backyard. He's watering your flowers with the hose. My flowers don't need watering. I just watered them this morning, muttered Mother without looking up. And if they get overwatered, they'll die. Now he's putting the hose between his legs to make it look like he's peeing on your flowers, shouted James. Mother just sighed and kept clipping. And now he really is peeing on your flowers, yelled James. Mother put down her clippers and said, Don't be a disgusting little boy. Those kind of stories are nasty. Then she gave James a dirty look and said, I'm very busy, so stop bothering me and go into the house. James was very frustrated, so he stomped up to the back door and went inside. But before he did, he saw the gorilla hiding behind Mother's azalea bush. The gorilla was pointing at James and giggling. James stuck his tongue out at the gorilla, but that just made the gorilla laugh harder. That night, James and his parents ate their dinner in front of the television. Mother and father chewed loudly while they stared at the screen. Father swallowed and then said, 
Did the boy tell you about this gorilla nonsense? Oh, I heard about it all right, said Mother. What a disgusting imagination he has. It's not my imagination. The gorilla is real, said James. If there was a gorilla in this house, don't you think we would have seen it? Now pipe down, we're getting to the good part, said Father as he turned up the volume on the TV remote. James slapped his forehead in frustration and said, You would see the gorilla if you'd only look when I tell you to. Mother and father ignored him. They chewed and swallowed and gazed blankly at the TV. Like, if you'd look now, you'd see that the gorilla is wearing one of Mom's frilly dresses. And he's, he's drinking milk right out of the carton. Now he's throwing eggs against the kitchen wall, said James. Mother and father didn't say a word. And now he's filling Dad's slippers up with mustard. Now he's hanging upside down from the chandelier. Oh, and now he's blowing his nose on the curtains, said James. That's what I mean. What a disgusting imagination, mumbled Mother. And now he's opened up the oven and he's turned it on, said James. Wait, he's bending over and he's... he's... He's pooping inside it. The gorilla pooped inside the oven and now he's cooking his own poop. Oh, goodness, cried Mother. Father pushed the mute button and turned to James and said, See what you've done. You've upset your mother. Go to your room right this instant. And no more talk about gorillas or anything disgusting. I mean it. Mother stood up and sniffed the air with an unpleasant look on her face. What's that awful smell, she said. Then her eyes got very big and she said, It smells like... It, it smells like... Father grimaced at James and said, It better not be what it smells like, because if it is... Mother ran to the oven, opened the door and looked inside. She gasped and said, Oh, my word, James pooped in the oven. It wasn't me, yelled James. It was the gorilla. But of course, the gorilla was nowhere to be seen. So James was sent to his room without finishing his dinner. He was blamed for the poop cooking in the oven. He was blamed for the mustard in father's slippers, the eggs on the wall, and the snot on the curtains. He was told that he was a silly, dishonest boy with a disgusting, rude imagination and he was told that he wouldn't be allowed to leave his room as long as the gorilla nonsense continued. James sat on his bed and fumed. He was mad at his parents for not believing him, but he was just furious at that awful gorilla for causing so much trouble. James heard a playful rap at the door. The gorilla came sauntering into his room with a big, goofy grin on his face. Get out of here, said James with a frown. The gorilla smirked and said, Oh, come on, man. Can't you take a joke? I was just playing around, having a little fun, right? You know how it is, baby. <laughs> well, go have fun somewhere else, grumbled James. I don't want to have anything to do with you. Don't be sore now, kid, said the gorilla. You're lucky to have me here. Check it out. I'm a talking gorilla. One of a kind, Junior. You ain't never seen no talking gorilla before, has you now? Big deal, said James. You stink. The gorilla sniffed his armpits and said, Phew, maybe you're right, man. I'm getting a bit on the ripe side. Maybe I'll just borrow your mama's bathing cap and have me a big old bubble bath. I ain't never had no bubble bath in a fancy tub before. And by the way, said James, your grammar is awful. Yeah, but Grandpa still loves her. Know what I mean, kid? <laughs> That's a joke, man. Free of charge from me to you. James stomped over to the door, opened it, and pointed to the hallway. Get out of my room and get out of my house. The gorilla doubled over with laughter and slapped his knees. You think it's that easy, little man? I got a sweet deal here. All the food, fun, and mischief I can handle. And I got you to take the blame for it all. Because your folks don't listen to a word you say. You think I'm going to give that up just because some fasty half-pint says so? Uh-uh. Ain't going to happen, Peanut. Fine then, said James. Then he slammed the door, walked down the hall, and told his parents that he would never, ever mention the gorilla again. His plan worked for a few days. No matter what the gorilla did, James didn't say a word. When the gorilla cut all of the sleeves out of father's suit jackets, 
Mother blamed it on moths, and James agreed. When the gorilla smashed all of Mother's favorite vases on the floor, Father blamed it on an earthquake, and James agreed. When the gorilla emptied the garbage can into the back seat of Father's car, Mother blamed it on a roving gang of angry ex-garbage men, and James agreed. During dinner, James would sit alongside his parents, staring blankly at the TV while he ate, ignoring the gorilla's crazy antics. But one night, the gorilla leaned in close to James and whispered in his ear, You think if you ignore me, I'm just going to go away, huh? Think again, sunshine. I'm here to stay, whether you like it or not, baby. And then James knew that it was time to get rid of that gorilla once and for all. The next day, Father sat in his deck chair, reading the paper in the backyard, while James played with his trucks in the grass. The gorilla was riding a pogo stick through Mother's begonia patch and wearing her flowery sun hat. James pretended not to see him. The gorilla got bored of destroying the flower garden and decided instead to dig up the lawn. He scooped big holes out of the turf with Father's shovel and threw little clots of dirt at the back of James' head just to annoy him. James took a deep breath and kept playing with his trucks. The gorilla looked disappointed for a moment and then perked up when he spied Father's big metal barbecue on the corner of the wooden deck. Beside the barbecue was a big chef's hat that said, Chef Dad. Next to that was a long white apron with the words, Get ready for a thrill when Dad's on the grill, stamped on it in red letters. Affixed to the grill was a little metal plaque which read, Property of Father, Do Not Touch. The gorilla put on the chef's hat and did a little dance, swinging his backside around as he bounced back and forth. James looked at the gorilla with shock. He waved his hands and silently mouthed the words, No, stop! But of course the gorilla wasn't going to stop. Instead he put on the apron and a pair of red oven mitts. He grabbed father's big shiny spatula and pretended to flip imaginary burgers in the air. James shook his head frantically and whispered, Stop right now, please! The gorilla laughed and slapped his knees. Then he picked up some of the dirt he dug up from the lawn and pressed it into the shape of a burger. He flipped the dirt burger in the air a couple of times. Then he turned on the grill and slapped the mud patty down with a sizzle on the hot metal rack. James stared at the gorilla for a moment and then said, quite calmly, Dad, I have something to tell you. Without looking up from his paper, Father said, It's not more of that gorilla business, is it? Because it better not be. No, sir, said James. Fine, then, said Father from behind the newspaper. What is it? Well, sir, said James, I'm very sorry, but I think I might have broken your barbecue. You did what? shouted Father. He immediately threw down his paper and snapped his head toward the deck. The gorilla was shocked. He stood perfectly still for a moment and then dropped the spatula with a loud bang. Father stared at the gorilla. The gorilla stared at Father. Then the gorilla gave a sheepish grin and waved meekly with the big red oven mitt. You! shouted Father. You filthy gorilla! Get away from my grill! Father sprang out of his seat and grabbed the shovel. Then he began chasing the gorilla around the yard, screaming like a madman and swinging the big metal tool over his head. The gorilla let out a high-pitched shriek and ran for his life, narrowly avoiding Father's attacks as he ducked and dodged. Mother heard the commotion and stepped outside. She saw Father chasing the gorilla, so she grabbed a broom and joined in. They chased the gorilla from one end of the yard to the other, around and around in circles. James could see that the terrified gorilla was getting very tired. As he ran past, the naughty ape wheezed, Help me now, son. These people are crazy. But James just smiled and folded his arms. He watched as the gorilla hopped the fence and ran off into the distance with mother and father in hot pursuit. And that was the last time James ever saw the gorilla. Eventually, mother and father apologized for not believing James, and he always knew how to get their attention. All he had to do was say one word. Gorilla. The End Written and read by Shan McFadden Music and produced by Christian McFadden Recorded at the Obtuse Caboose Studios.